It's my pleasure to welcome you to Answers from Scripture. Whether you're just being introduced to the Bible for the first time or you've been studying it for a lifetime, I'm confident that you'll benefit from Brother Mark's passionate explanations for the Word of God. Hey, welcome back, family and friends. I'm your host, Brother Mark. This is Answers from Scripture. The question today, should Bible believers celebrate Halloween? The answer is very simple. No. No, 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 no. A thousand times no. You say, wait a minute. Uh, You did a video on should we celebrate Christmas, and you referenced Romans 14. One man esteemeth one day above another, another man esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be persuaded his own mind. You reference Easter, and should Christians celebrate Easter? And you went to Romans 14. One man esteems a day better than another. Another man esteems every day alike. Let everyone be persuaded in his own mind. So why is Halloween different? Well, Easter and Christmas are at least purported to be holy days. And the people that celebrate them celebrate them unto the Lord. Whereas there are some days that are set apart in the calendar that are anti-holy or unholy days, if you will. They don't even pretend to be holy days. They're days to glorify sin and Satan. And while we have that day on our calendar, we should serve the Lord every day. And we should serve every day as unto the Lord. And we shouldn't be involved in anything that has to do with the demonic forces and the worldly customs and culture. I want you to notice in Jeremiah chapter 10, beginning verse 2, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of the heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. The way of the heathen. We shouldn't copy the way of the heathen. Now, some Christians like to celebrate the birth of Christ, and some don't. That's fine. Let every man be swayed his own mind. Some Christians like to celebrate the resurrection, and some say, hey, we celebrate it every day. That's fine. Let every man be persuaded in his own mind. But then there are some days, like Halloween, has only pagan roots, has nothing to do with Christianity. He said, well, Catholics, Catholics, Catholicism is 100% pagan with a thin veil of Christianity as a disguise. It's paganism, and it's rooted in paganism. And some of these days are actually chosen to celebrate sin. I'm going to show you that in just a minute, but before we do... Let's go to Leviticus chapter 20, okay? Leviticus chapter 20 and see how serious some of these things are. Right from the word of God, from God's own mouth. Leviticus chapter 20, beginning with verse 6. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God, and ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctifieth you. So let's just talk about some of these days for a moment. And before we talk about Halloween, I want to talk about a prototype of Halloween. The Catholic Church has a time period called Lent, 40 days leading up to Easter, during which Catholics are supposed to fast. This isn't a typical fast, though. It doesn't mean that they go without eating and drinking for 40 days like Jesus did. In fact, they choose something each Lent. Each individual can choose what he or she wants to give up or fast. The thing they give up during Lent is almost always something wicked. For example, they'll say, for the next 40 days, I'm going to give up drunkenness, and I'm not going to get drunk. 40 days straight, I'm going to stay sober. Or I've been living in whoredom. I'm sleeping with a woman to whom I'm not married. And for 40 days, we're going to give that up, and we're going to stay celibate. The Bible doesn't say give up sin for a few days. The Bible, Jesus said to the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, he said, go and sin no more. Yeah, and the Bible says in Ephesians, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands. 
The Bible says in 1 John of chapter 2, it says, uh, these things I've written unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. We're not supposed to sin, and we're not supposed to have the idea of, well, we'll give up sin for a few days, and maybe we'll get some brownie points. We're supposed to mortify the deeds of the flesh. We're supposed to do everything we can to avoid sin and not to sin. For our whole lifetime, we're supposed to be holy, for the Lord is holy. But it gets worse than that. Not only do they choose those 40 days and say, I'm going to give up a particular sin or a particular iniquity or a particular wickedness for those 40 days, but then the day before it starts, Ash Wednesday is the first day of the 40 days. The day before it starts is Tuesday, and it's called Fat Tuesday. Maybe you've heard Mardi Gras. It's Fat Tuesday. And what's Fat Tuesday? It's the day of indulgence. In other words, I'm going to give up drinking for 40 days, so on Tuesday, I'm going to get the drunkest I've ever been in my life. I'm going to drink myself till I'm in a stupor, and I can't drink anymore and don't want it anymore. Why? Because for 40 days, I have to live without it. Or I'm going to give up fornication and whoremongering and adultery for 40 days. So on Fat Tuesday, I'm going to get all the intimacy I can get, and it doesn't matter what God says about it, I'm going to go out and, and commit some orgy because the next day I'm going to give up those sins. Now, I don't think Christians ought to follow this whole Lent calendar at all. Yes, we should fast as God leads us, but that has nothing to do with it. But Fat Tuesday, that's as pagan and wicked as it comes. That's not a holy day where each decides whether he's going to follow that holy day as unto the Lord or ignore the holy day. That's an anti-holy day. It's an unholy day. It's a wicked day. And we shouldn't follow. We shouldn't learn the way of the heathen. We shouldn't become pagans and do what they do. And that's Fat Tuesday. Well, Halloween is a similar day to Fat Tuesday. The Catholics who chose all of their holidays somewhat according to the pagan calendars and pagan holidays and just kind of tried to dress them up a little bit to make them look Christian. But one day they chose was November 1st. Now remember that, November 1st, and they call it All Saints Day. And their theory is that on November 1st, God allows the ghosts, the disembodied ghosts of all the saints of history let loose uh, from the cemeteries on November 1st. And that there's so much influence for good and for God and so much holy power that comes off just emanating from these disembodied ghosts that it's almost impossible for the demons to do anything on November 1st. Hence, Halloween. Halloween is to All Saints Day what Mardi Gras is to Lent. It's the day before. Just like people celebrate Christmas and then they have Christmas Eve. What does Eve mean? It means the day before. Okay, Halloween, Eve. You notice there's a little apostrophe where the V should be even. What does hollow even mean? The evening before holiness. The evening before the saints roam. The evening before the earth is filled with holiness. So the demons do on Halloween, this is the Catholic theory, what the people do on Mardi Gras. And they get all the evil out of them that they can get. And it's a day to celebrate evil. It's a day where the demons just run with liberty and unleashed on the earth to do as they please. And it's a day to celebrate the demonic side of the world. Should Bible believers involve themselves in that? No, 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 a thousand times no. Even the concept of trick or treat. Trick or treat, if you, if you go back to the time where it was a pagan holiday, these young pagans would come to the door and they would demand some particular treat. And if they weren't given that treat, then they'd play a trick. And the trick would be to light the barn on fire along with the man's livestock. Or the trick would be to take that man's daughter and to rape her and physically abuse her and then dump her on the doorstep. In other words, they would be committing these acts, horrible acts, and threatening them if you don't give them a treat. That's extortion. And he said, oh, but when my little children dress up, they say trick or treat, they don't even know what it means. I know they don't. 
but they're acting out the horrible history of pagan extortion. And they're saying, trick or treat, trick or treat. Halloween's a pagan holiday. Now, October 31st isn't a pagan holiday. October 31st has been separated by some as a day to remember God's word. And uh, October 31st is an important day in many people's lives and in every people's life, every day should be celebrated unto the Lord. But the concept of Halloween, it's pagan. It's completely pagan and heathen. Let's look at one more verse, Deuteronomy 18, and just realize what God thinks about these activities. Deuteronomy 18, I'm going to begin with verse 9, actually. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or those that useth divination, which is like magic, or an observer of times, like stargazers and those in, a, in astrology, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, a medium, or a wizard, or a necromancer, those who speak with the dead. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. God saying to his people, don't be like them. Wizards and witches and mediums and uh, astrologers, don't be like them. And that's practically the, the costume list right there. I don't want my children to have anything. I don't want them to come within a million miles of that kind of garbage. And by the way, if the Satanists were to make a movie of an actual a literal satanic liturgy and make that movie. I wouldn't want my family to watch it, but I'd rather have them watch that than some Disney cartoon that has witches and wizards and warlocks and all that. You say, what? An actual Satanist? Made? Yeah, why? Because it's obviously evil. But Disney takes what's obviously evil and tries to make it cute and adoring and innocent and sweet and childish and make-believe. You say, well, my kids go trick-or-treat. They, they, don't, they don't believe in all that stuff. That's the problem. And someday they're going to believe in it. Someday they're going to be confronted by it. They're going to realize the power of the darker side. And there might be an appeal there. And you led them into that. Instead of saying from day one, no, we follow the Lord. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world. We're not going to have anything to do with the evil spirits. We're going to follow the Holy Spirit and be filled with him and serve him. I hope that helps. I hope you'll find something better to do on October 31st than Halloween. And pray for people that are trapped in it. Pray for people who, without intervention, whose children will be sacrificed on that day. Pray for people who will be the victims of hideous tricks that come when the treats aren't provided. You know what kind of evil accompanies that day. Pray for these people. Let's turn it around and let's use it as a day for the Lord. I hope you'll use every day that way, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks so much for listening. If you have a question you'd like to have answered, mention it in the comments field below, or visit us at www.answersfromscripture.online. Thank you.